You know, shame on me. Shame on me for not covering the Tough Series earlier in the season. Probably the most sold mid-budget motherboard ever made, or almost. But today I am writing this wrong with the excellent Tough Gaming B850 Plus Wi-Fi. Asus most sold motherboard in the intensely competitive mid-budget gaming market. And fun fact for you, uh, the longest orgasm in mammals is the one of the domesticated pig. Educating the masses, I say. Now, starting with the obvious, the tough B850 shows off the same 8-layered low-loss PCB we had seen on Asus products, which provides the foundation for the long-lasting, low-signal bleeding motherboards it wants to be. Design-wise, well, um, to be honest, I'm not a fan of that new design. I did like the more monolithic, alien-looking cubic blocks we had seen last year, but I do love the fact that we're going away from the shiny PCB and going back to a more discrete matte one. But overall, it does check all the right boxes for more military, general theme uh, uh, that Tuff is trying to go for. We do have an embedded RGB strip right here. I usually don't really like those, but I have to note that this one is particularly more shiny and brighter than what I've seen before, so it does kind of work. Uh, in this case. It is powered by our usual AM5 CPU socket, here to remind Intel that you can have a CPU socket which can support more than two generations of processors consecutively. Actually, this one will uh, probably end up supporting five of them in total. And chipset-wise, well, we're dealing with the 2025 revelation, the first budget-friendly chipset able to deliver 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes, which ironically has been the biggest problem for AMD this year, because when you get such a powerful B-series chipset, why on earth would you spend more for a near identical X870 chipset? And worth noting, it is also very power efficient with a small heat footprint, and it is uh, uh, easily kept below the 60 degrees Celsius, even with a relatively small heat block. VRM-wise, our tough comes heavy and is equipped with a rather expensive expensive and enthusiast-driven 1780M's 4U26 high power stages, which usually equipped our Asus and Gigabyte gaming-focused motherboard, the whole organized in a 14 plus 2 plus 1 configuration. A substantial upgrade when you compare it to its predecessor, the B650 Tough, and compound to that the fact that the new generation of Ryzen processors are more efficient than their previous generations, and you have, well, a potentially serious overclocker on a B-level motherboard. Now, I do want to have a special note for the reinforced 5000 hours graded high temperature resistant capacitors, which is quite important because it is where 99% of VRM usually fail on the capacitor levels. So a rather good indication that the Tough B850 um, will last and has some robustness to it. And it's so fucking hot here. Now, the VRM cooling solution is made of two individual cooling blocks, which do feature a double thermal padded contact design that we now take for granted. The side block has volume and it shows an acceptable heat transfer rate of 0.65 watts, but nothing compared to the 4.19 watts heat transfer of the main block. And it cruelly shows because after an hour long of synthetic stress test, the side block struggles to dissipate more heat than are produced by the 640 amps worth of power stages it's here to keep cool, explaining the nearly 60 degrees Celsius at the end of my test. And this is such a contrast when you compare it to the much larger main block, which never crossed the 45 degrees Celsius and stays nice and cool during the entire test. And that's such a pity because overall, this is a very strong, agile, powerful VRM, a very nice upgrade coming from the B650 indeed. But that side block is simply too small and limiting what this VRM can do. I was talking about overclocking. Well, there's very little thermal space to do so now. So it's a great you know, VRM for intense gaming, but for a cooler and therefore more durable system, I would pair it with nothing more than a Ryzen 5 or 7 at most. Now, memory-wise, well, we have what we paid for, 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual channel configuration with a data swap rated up to a maximum of 8 billion transfers per second, which can be obtained on a single stick configuration. But most uh, realistically, and as you may already know, in a dual channel configuration, you're not going 
going to go beyond 6 million transfers per second, which is beyond the reach of any AAA games out there. And the tough was made for gaming, so there's absolutely nothing to reset here. Storage-wise, well, our tough B850 comes with three M.2 slots and only one PCIe 5.0 enabled. The two others are chipset fed and run at PCIe 4.0 standard, therefore half the speed. Speed. Again, you'll need to jump to either the B850 Rock series or the Tough X870 version to get anything more. On the plus side, all of our M.2 solid state drive sticks will get a thermal padded heat plate, something we don't see on either the Asus Max or Pro series. But on the less good side of things, the heat plates have no screwless mechanism, which is annoying. A little lazy coming from Asus, even on a B850 budget minded motherboard. PCIe export wise, the real star here is the CPU fed export with its 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes, which provides a future proofed support for any graphics cards now and future, hence a metallic reinforcement. Little kudos for the finger ready GPU eject mechanism, simple, solid, and efficient. The remaining exports are all chipset fed, and again, other than the naked 16 slots, which shows enough bandwidth to sustain some PCIe based additional storage, I think that, well, those expansion slots will serve no one and are just wasting our money here. Now, the PCIe bifurcation part. Thankfully, we don't have too much of that here. Both this export and this M.2 solid state drive connector share bandwidth, so obviously you'll have to choose either or, but other than this, it is a rather uh, uh, honest motherboard. Now, back IO-wise, well, we have a very similar configuration seen on last year model. We got an identical integrated display configuration, a very similar menu of USB plugs for a total of 60 gigabit per second worth of bandwidth against 50 last year. But we do have a slight upgrade on the front panel connector, which does bring up to about 85 gigabit per second our grand USB total. And if that is not enough, we do have an optional power plug for Thunderbolt 4 expansion, which is nice. Now, the other upgraded section worth noting is our Wi-Fi 7 dual band adapter, which is rather nice, both in terms of transfer rate, but most importantly, will provide a near fiber optic latency Again, great gaming value. Finally, we have our mid-range 1220p Realtek audio codec, which benefits from some installation efforts coming from the Tough team and some modest cleansing capacitors. It might not be suited for the most, you know, audio professional, audio centric uh, enthusiasts out there, but it'll do a great job, an acceptable job in terms of gaming, uh, streaming and all that stuff. Overall, the back IO is within the acceptable range of what you would expect at this price range. Now, cooling wise, well, we do have the usual flurry of fan connectors, including an all in one, so nothing gets out of the usual. And finally, troubleshooting wise, we have our basics covered as well, our easy debugger, thank God for that, since the Max series review, I will never take this option for granted. And in addition, we do have our flashback button for CPU-less BIOS update, quite crucial in my opinion. Now, in conclusion, the Tough Gaming B850 Plus Wi-Fi will cost you about 230 bucks before taxes, which is a little more than we had seen at the Tough B650 launch. Fact of the matter, thanks to the new B850 chipset, it is fundamentally a very different motherboard. We now have a PCIe 5.0 support for our GPU, and that is absolutely central to the new generation of graphics card. The VRM upgrade, despite not being perfect, remains a big plus compared to its predecessor, and it is also a more durable product with an eight-layered PCB against only six previously, something which would have costed you $350 or $400 last year to own. And I could stop the review here and Asus would be very happy with me. But unfortunately, Asus does not live in a vacuum and the competition has evolved as well and maybe a little bit faster. If you look at the Gigabyte B850 Elite and the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk, well, they are competing in an identical price segment and they are bad news for Asus. And well, the MSI B850 Tomahawk in particular, because it does have very similar specs, but it is a more DIY friendly, has better connectivity features, and most importantly, has better thermals in general. And, and both are great motherboards. They're great gaming mid-budget motherboards, but unless the Tough goes 20 to $30 below the price of the Tomahawk, I'm not feeling completely comfortable telling you that it is 
the biggest bang for your buck, at least not yet. I think that Asus has to rework a little bit of its pricing and then and only then will I be able to say, well, there is nowhere else your money wants, needs and begs you to be. Thank <laughs> you.